Capital in the morning with Amina and McBool. And as we wake you up, hit us up and let us know questions galore that are coming in. I'm not quite sure which one to start with, but I I, I didn't know this. Uh, but in terms of public speaking, you're not big on that. Oh, I do it because one does it. It's part of the job. Um, I, 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 I look. This is. This is relatively straightforward. We can't mm. see the listener. Exactly. Oh, we can imagine them walking around naked after a shower. <laughs> Madam, put that on. <laughs> Sir, what are you doing? Exactly. You can imagine them, and on television you think about people sitting there. But when you actually have to stand in front of a group of people, yeah. several hundred or a thousand, or I did a conference recently where there were 7,000 people. Wow. And you realize there's an art to holding a group of people that you can see because you can feel if they're bored. Exactly. You can feel if they've had enough and you can feel if they're hostile. Indeed. Um, so there's a certain anxiety. I don't relish, I don't rush to go and do public speaking at and you had to do a couple of sessions to, to get over that fear. Yeah, I did a couple of sessions because we were making a program about it. Yeah. And it was all about breathing techniques. I mean, again, when we're talking here on the radio, we're just yeah. conversing. Exactly. But if you're ta- you, you've got to learn to breathe. Let the, Use the diaphragm. The, the, uh, the diaphragmatic breathing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> No, madam, I'm not deep breathing down the radio. <laughs> this is diaphragmatic breathing. <laughs> there you go. Listen, uh, yeah. 2008... You had a drug scare in New York Central Park. That's one way of putting it. What comes to your mind when you reflect back on it? It's very simple. Everybody in their lives is going to have certain crises. Mm -hmm. Uh, You get through these crises uh, by help and support of family and friends. Now, that sounds like a dreadful cliche, and every sort of celeb who's in, who, who gets themselves caught in a mess says that, but it's true. And anybody, whether it's a health scare that you're having, or it's a job scare, or a love scare, or whatever, you get through it with the help of other people. On this particular issue, all I would say is there are, to anybody out there who is in trouble with substances, or is finding themselves in difficulty with them there is help and support out there if you choose to take it nothing is hopeless if you would have told me back in 2008 that oh within 10 years you'll be talking on the radio in in kenya and about this i'd have said you're mad Mm-hmm. Alice said, you're mad, I'm finished, I'm over, it's nothing, it's done, it's, it's, it's toast. Mm-hmm. But with, with support from others, you get through. We talk about East Africa in a good light, but we've had our cases, especially when it comes to uh, being open and liberal. We've seen in Uganda, and it's illegal actually in Kenya, but sexual orientation becomes a play when you're talking about in Africa. Just from a perspective of someone who's been in the global platform, what do you mean I'm out? It's just said, I'm uh, no, out. Exactly. I was getting there. I was getting no, there. No, you were taking a very long time to get there. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, eight o'clock, the eight o'clock news was heading in our direction by the time you finished. But, but, but what do you think? What's your take on it? Look, it's very straightforward in that sense. I am out. I'm obviously going to be uh, advancing an agenda that says there should be at least the decriminalization of same sexual activity. Indeed. It's straightforward. I'm not going to mess around with that one. That is my, obviously, my, my belief. Exactly. But what I would put it, allow me to put it in another way. Mm. I live in London and I live in New York. I think they are both cities that people in this country can admire, Mm. would aspire to be in and would look forward to visiting. There's a reason why I live in those cities. Mm. There's a reason why those cities attract the talent and whatever. Mm. Because we can live our lives as we wish. We can love who we wish. Mm. There's nobody telling us that is wrong, that is not incorrect, that is against the law. I do not for a moment doubt the sincerity of those people who are against me on this issue. And I can respect their point of view. I merely say that in this day and age, if you want to succeed... If you want Kenya to be a thriving, vibrant, modern Mm -hmm. economy, you're going to have to look at this in a different way and ask yourself, what is it about these very successful places that that we need to at least try and uh, attract? That's the way you do it. You let people live their lives, love who they want in the way they wish.
Well said. Absolutely well said. Let's take a couple of questions from Twitter, which is buzzing at the moment, and everyone wants to ask the question. Go uh, on. A question. Anything you like. All right. Let's face it, you've done, you've done my miscreant <laughs> past. You've done my sexuality. <laughs> the only thing you haven't looked at is my bank account, and I assure you, you're not getting anywhere near it. I'm just trying to find out who Richard Quest is. You've found it. How do you manage your time uh, so well by anchoring Quest means business, CNN business travel, and the Express? This is a question coming from Tola or to Koya. I have a great team of people that make sure I'm in the right place at the right time. And also, I snooze. I am a snoozeaholic. <laughs> no, seriously. I, I have a couch. I have a sofa in my office. I have no problem saying to my staff between programs, I'm just going to go and have what I always say is, I'm just having 15 minutes with the Financial Times. <laughs> And I'm, going, I'm just going for 10 minutes with the FT. And that's, the, you know, Richard's having a snooze. Right. Wake him if we need to. Right. But otherwise, <laughs> he'll be a miserable if we don't. Right. Uh, Steve Buru says... Hey, Steve, morning. Uh, the impact and suggested reaction to emerging uh, protectionist policies on African economies. Right. The first thing you need to do is look within your own borders. Before you start worrying about other people's protectionist policies, mm-hmm. ask yourself, how many... I, I, I'll give you an example... Um, open skies across Africa. There is a, an agreement that there's supposed to be open skies uh, across Africa. I think mm-hmm. it's the Amasuka Agreement. We are so far away from that. If there was open skies, you would find that there would be a liberalisation, a growth in industry. Kenya Airways, which is gagging to fly to more places Indeed. in around the continent. If there was open skies, you would find it. Can I hold you for another 15 or so? I'm looking at the big man in the corner with the ginger hair. Can we? He wants 15 more minutes of my time. Well, African 15. Oh. That means until 8 o'clock. Oh, perhaps. where's my wallet? <laughs> Radio in the morning never sounded so good. Capital in the morning.